Welcome back, friends. So if you've been following along, you'll know in the previous video, uh, I touched on removing gear out of the Jeep, making the Jeep lighter, and then also just uh, cleaning things up so we're a bit more organized and easier to stay organized is, is really the key. Staying organized and dropping weight, I think, is a, a pretty big thing. Um, when it comes to overlanding or expedition or camping or something, all too often, I think most of us get wrapped up in um, more gear is more better but then after a while we neglect how much weight and just how much clutter we're adding to the vehicle. So that's what this whole thing about. And today I thought it would be perfect to start with the stove. Now, uh, a few reasons why I'm switching just real quick here and then we'll get in a little deeper. But one, um, we use a Coleman 425E, I believe it is. It's basically your like standard two burner Coleman stove from 70s, 80s era that almost everyone has seen and used. Um, we have no problems with it, works super well and uh, it's a fantastic fun functioning stove, except that it has two burners and we never, ever, ever, ever use the second burner. We always use one. Uh, we use it to cook a lot and it works really well, but we never use the second burner almost ever. So I thought to myself, what better way to drop some weight and mainly save space is to go into a nice one burner stove. And that's how I came along the MSR Dragonfly. So let's take a look at the stove and kind of how we use it and how it sits in the back of the Jeep here. And then uh, we'll show, I'll show you why like the MSR Dragonfly I think is the perfect stove for us and probably most overlanders. And then I'll give you a few other options that you can take a look at too. All right, so what you're seeing here is a pretty typical camp setup for us. Uh, we're missing a few things. One, I have a water container here. I, uh, I don't leave it in here only because it has a filter in it and if you freeze water within it, you can damage the filter, so I take it out. I don't leave it stored in here. Everything else, though, is pretty much what's in here, minus camera gear and clothes, which tend to take up quite a lot of space. But you can imagine if I have a water tank here, which my water tank comes to about here, I have enough space to kind of stack a few more things here, and that's what I'm trying to prevent. I'm trying to prevent the stacking of stuff. Essentially what happens is uh, when we go exploring or camping, uh, things start stacking up behind the driver's seat and I do that to keep the passenger rear window open to, to so I have more visibility when we're driving essentially. Uh, but because of that you get into this habit where you start stacking stuff and we start stacking things. You lose things or things are hard to get and you don't want to dig it out and uh, things just become a pain. So uh, to prevent that I'm going to, that's, that's the point, is move to smaller gear. One of those things is just remove the stove. Um, you can see, and this is the pouch here I chose for the, the MSR, you can see the difference in size and weight. I mean, if we take this stove out, you have the equivalent of that. And that has just opened this entire area. And it would be nice if I can get the water container, my camera gear, and the clothes all below this level. Uh, that would help prevent some of the stacking. The other thing we are going to do in a future video is we're going to figure out everything that's in this container here is going to get a spot. And I mean like a mounted spot or an organized spot, uh, not just a container where you're just lobbing junk in. So I think that's, that's part of our problem. I know it's part of our problem is that you rummage through there, grab stuff, and then when you put it back, it's never where you want it. So uh, that will be fixed in the future, but today, just the stove. So now that you know kind of my set up back here and how complicated they can get uh, when you start piling junk in. Let's take a look at the differences in the stove and I'll show you kind of where we cook. And uh, yeah, here we are. This is our typical like cooking setup. We kind of just throw the stove on this tailgate table that I made. Um, we honestly, we don't even carry a table with us anymore. We just, we cook solely off of this and just use this for everything. But essentially we just, you know, set this up like you would any other stove and away we go. Now, the problem in lies with having two burners, and I'll show you what we typically cook with. So the first item we cook with is uh, a baduri. It's basically like an Australian version of a Dutch oven, uh, except the, the top is like a skillet. So you can cook with this or the pot, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's spun still and all that stuff. But uh, the problem is if I wanted to cook with two of these at the same time, you really, I mean, you really can't, you know? It just doesn't. Things just don't fit. Um, you can cook like that, but you're cooking offset and uh, it just doesn't fit. The other thing we cook with is this little pot here. It's just like a Stanley pot. We use it to boil water for coffee and such. And when you put it on here, you kind of have to get it just right because you can set it in some bad spots, which I have actually done. I have done this. I've set it 
uh, right here like this and not have known. And when it boiled, the cup went like this and dumped a whole thing of water down to the burner when it was like 15 degrees. And then I had to get all the water out of there and it was not a good time. So there's still issue was with this specific pot on the other stove and I'll show you that too. But um, this grating here, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, and this takes up a lot of space on the table. You can't really use the table for anything else when you have the stove out. Uh, not too much of a problem, we work around it, but still, uh, unlike the dragonfly I'm about to show you, uh, you get a little bit, just a little bit more room here. So let's put this away and pull out the dragonfly. Now the dragonfly um, is not perfect, I will say that. There is some setup involved. Uh, more setup involved in the Coleman stove. Which is, that's, that's gonna be the more like painful part, I guess, is you can't just open it as quick and kind of go type of thing. You do have to do a little bit of setup on this stuff. And again, I, I've not used it to actually cook yet. Um, and I'm still learning this thing, so I'm probably gonna fumble through this a little bit. Uh, that probably doesn't need to be so tight. We'll just give it a little pump here so I can show you. What it's like all hooked up. And we'll do a little run test, I guess. Might as well while we have it out, right? Okay, so that's pretty much the setup. Um, I think when you have some weight on here, this hose would be able to stretch out a little bit better. But that's pretty much the setup. The nice thing about this is if you take our big pot and you throw it on here, it holds the pot better and it holds obviously the top better for the skillet part. So that's great. The bad news is this cup, the Stanley cup that we use, it just, like it barely, like you can get it to balance on there, but it's just not good. So we're just gonna replace this with something else, something a little bit better. Um, which is unfortunate. So you have to be careful with how small of a container you get to boil water or whatever you're doing in it. And with this dragonfly, it doesn't work super well. Now the other stove that's the runner up to this one in my mind is the Whisper Light. The Whisper Light is a really amazing stove. Lots of people love it, glowing reviews. Um, this has two things, this dragonfly has two things over the Whisper Light. One, the pot stands are a little more substantial. So if you cook with a bigger pot like we do or skillet, it's gonna be a little bit better. The other thing that this has is the simmer ability. And we'll light it up here in just a check and I'll, and I'll so, show you that. But the simmering ability on this thing is just, it's fantastic, um, really fantastic. So let me actually pump this up all the way like you're supposed to and we'll get it, uh, we'll light it up here and then I'll show you the simmering. I'm not gonna cook anything on it or simmer water or anything. I'll just show you how low we can get that flame. And it's, it's really impressive. While this is priming, one thing that I, I do want to hit upon is that the Coleman stove actually primes faster than this Dragonfly. I think it's just the generator design, but uh, it primes extremely quick, the Coleman does. This one, it takes about a minute or so. Uh, it's not super long, but you can see there it's primed and ready to go. Okay, so now that we're all preheated and everything, generator is all nice and warm. Uh, we've been running for about a minute or two here. So uh, I wouldn't want to say we're probably on medium heat and I can get my hand Right, right about there before I start really filling it burn, uh, which is, you know, fine. We're on medium heat. What I want to show you though, it's, it, I call it candle mode, really. Um, and we can turn this thing just right down pretty easily, really. And hopefully you're able to see the glow ring going around in here from the flame because the flame is so low. It's basically like a candle in there right now. And I can get my hand right about there before I really start filling it burn. And that's pretty, that's pretty low. Uh, for simmering when you have a still pot. That's, that's pretty low and that's really nice. And one thing this does do that the Coleman doesn't is it seems to hold heat in that generator really well. So if I crank this back up, it comes right back. It comes right out of that preheat mode kind of and it doesn't flame up or anything, as of yet anyway. It seems to kind of hold a lot of good heat in the generator. One issue with the Coleman stove that we do have is when you do try to simmer and you run it low, 
uh, the generator seems to lose a lot of heat quick. And then when you go to crank it up, um, you almost have to heat the generator up because you kind of get a nice big flyer, fireball coming out. So the simmering ability is the other thing I really bought the stove for because we do a lot of cooking and it's hard to actually do cooking is if you, if you have just a stove that's either on or off. It makes it really difficult, especially in still pots and pans. Um, yeah, especially in still pots and pans. So yeah, I, I think this thing is great and you can see with it set up like this and that stuff out of the way, you have a nice little area to set things down or set tools or implements or maybe a little bit of prep while you're cooking, which is kind of nice. We didn't have that before. So definitely some, uh, some weight savings and space savings going on here, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and we'll just close this thing off and pack it away. The last problem we have to deal with is where do we store this so that we stay with the theme here of staying organized and easily accessible stuff. And uh, my thought was, well, we'll just go around on the tailgate. And I think that's gonna be the best spot for both the fuel bottle and the stove. And here's why. It's gonna prevent these two from rolling around. It's gonna prevent them from getting lost. And also it's gonna prevent them from like, at least as far as the stove is concerned, things getting thrown on top and getting it crushed and potentially broken. So I think back here on the tailgate would be perfect. Plus it'd, it'd be neat and just be really organized. Um, the only problem I have with that is finding out how to attach something. Now, what I've came up with is two companies, and the second company I'm forgetting the name of. Uh, they're both uh, USA made products, which is good. But you have Grayman Tactical, and the bonus to Grayman Tactical is that uh, it's going to be the full dimensions of this board, just about, uh, which is nice. That means you get a lot of mounting options on here, and you can put a little, a little bit more stuff for organization, which is good. Now, the second company, um, theirs is nice because it's made of metal. Grayman Tactical is plastic. The second company I'm looking at is made of metal. Uh, it has two problems though. One, the dimensions are short uh, as far as the height on this board goes. And we're going to lose about four inches of like molly things. Basically, we're going to lose like four inches of height here. So we're not going to have as much storage options. And on top of that, right in the middle, it's got Rubicon etched into it where you're like, uh, molly slots would be. So I'm not really too happy about that because you're losing quite a lot of mounting capability with that one. Uh, you're losing a lot of height. So you can't configure everything all the way to the edge of this board like you could with the Grandman Tactical. The bonus is that the other company is made of 12 gauge steel and the Grandman Tactical is made of plastic. I'm concerned that the plastic one won't hold up to the weight of the fuel bottle, but maybe that's just a concern I have. It is supposed to be really well built plastic. It's not like your average run of the mill PVC or anything. Um, so it should, it should hold up. I'm just concerned that it won't over time. So really, if you guys could help me out in the comments and let me know your thoughts and which one I should go, and I'll probably pick the one that the general consensus in the comments picks. Um, but honestly, the two options are plastic and full dimensions of this board, or metal, but like three quarters of the dimensions of this board. Um, so it, those, those are the two options. And I think as far as like storing the stove, that's gonna be a fantastic option. Obviously I'm gonna move this stuff around and we'll get rid of these things and get some proper pouches for some of this stuff and go through and get rid of some of the stuff we don't need. Anyway, that's what I think we're gonna do for a storage solution on the stove. And that'll be in a future video. Uh, like I said, please comment, let me know which route I should go and, uh, and what everyone thinks I should go, that's what I'll do. All right. So now that we have the storage system figured out, um, we're pretty much done. That's why I'm gonna go with the MSR Dragonfly uh, versus a two burner stove or really any other single burner stove. I think it's a great option. It has a long history. People have had these things for a long time. It's been around for a long time. And when you have a product that's been around for that long, um, clearly there's a reason for it. And uh, it's, it's just because it works. So uh, this is the updated model, just so you know, and that's why it simmers so well. Uh, the previous models, the older ones, apparently simmer pretty well, but um, MSR kind of changed a, a few little things on them to help them simmer a little bit better. And uh, they added things like uh, the shaker jet, which helps longevity of the stove, uh, keeping it clean. So with that, um, that's, that's why we chose the MSR Dragonfly. And uh, we haven't fully tested it out yet. That'll come in a future video where we'll test all this gear out. Uh, things to come in the future is we're going to continue working on gear, uh, getting gear out, swapping things out, reducing weight of the entire Jeep, and just try to get really focused, really narrow, and really organized on everything in here. I think that's going to be really important. Uh, also, uh, you guys aren't going to see a pause in any of the videos. Uh, we, are, we are working on um, 
moving. So you might see the scenery of the videos change up a little bit and it may be disorganized depending on how the videos come out. If you'd like to see a moving video, um, I'll do that. Uh, but if, if I don't hear anything about it, I may not. It just depends on how stressful the move is. Uh, since we're moving 700 miles away, we kind of have to move all at one time. Uh, but if you'd like to see that, let me know or give a thumbs up or something like that. And uh, I, I may just do it anyway, just cause it's kind of fun to film that kind of stuff. So uh, if you like it, cool. If you don't, um, then I guess don't watch that. But with that, thank you guys for watching. And uh, that's the end of it, I think. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, whoa, settle down, Cap.